Hey guys, it's your girl, Claudia Jordan, and I'm back with a brand new episode of TGIF. And like always, we're here to break down some of the biggest headlines in the news and in the world of social media. So sit back, relax, grab you something to drink because uh, we about to spill some of this hot tea. Now you already know who's joining me tonight. Please welcome the fellas. We have a uh, multimedia personality and talk show host, Funky Dineva. Hey, Funky. Hey, y'all. What's the tea? Hey, hey, we about to find out. And brand strategist Al Reynolds. Fellas, how are y'all feeling tonight? And what are y'all, are y'all drinking tonight? Or is it back on that nonsense? I'm um, just drinking strawberry lemonade tonight. I'm on a natural high. I listened to Mary J. Blige's new album today when I was leaving the radio station. And she got some tracks on there that just made me have to bypass the liquor store altogether. I'm feeling fine, 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 fine. Woo! <laughs> oh, good, 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 good. Uh, I got I'm some uh, vodka and uh, cranberry juice and some Red Bull. I'm in Aruba for a few days at my favorite spot where I want to retire. So I'm just okay. uh, making Leonard. You know, we stopped at the uh, grocery the store green. on the way to the hotel instead okay. of getting that 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 fifty dollar bottle in the room. So we uh-huh. all stocked up over here. So they're not about to get us. Al, what you sipping on wine? You got wine? You got that Modelo still? No, still Modelo. It's my last one. So maybe I'll switch it up on Wednesday. I was going to say, Hi, fellas. Well, we are celebrating the release of Mary J. Blige's new album, Good Morning Gorgeous. And guess what? We have a sneak peek just for you. Take a look. Oh, 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 oh. I'm a ass. It's time to fight. It seems like I'm always against me. It seems like this is never ending. Oh, oh. I wake up every morning and tell myself Good morning, gorgeous Sometimes you gotta look in the mirror and say Good morning, gorgeous iHeartRadio's album release party with Mary J. Blige is happening tonight Right, I'm sorry, right here on Fox Soul Tonight at 7 p.m. Pacific Time and 10 p.m. on the East. People are excited about this. And this is really good look for Fox Soul uh, doing what we do. Are you fellas excited? I know, Funky, you excited about this. Are you guys excited I'm, for listen, Mary I'm really J's excited. party tonight? I'm really excited. And I hate being at the party and not knowing the song. So I made sure, like, on my way home today from the radio station that I listened to the album because I was stuck in an hour's worth of traffic. And Mary got some songs on there. She got a song on there called Rent Money with Dave East, y'all, that I'm just loving. She was like... Baby, basically, I don't spend so much on you. I need you to run me back my rent money. Like, it, it's just good. The album was good. It was the Mary that we have not seen, that we've been missing for years. Mary really did it. And I encourage all of y'all to attend the iHeart Listener Party here on Fox Soul because you will be highly pleased with Mary J's new album. Oh, and the Good Morning Gorgeous interlude. That is the bomb to it. Go for the later process of how she came up with it. Like, it's dope. Uh, Nyshayla in the chat says, child, this sneak peep and peeking all week. Well, soulmates, you're in for a special treat because tonight <laughs> is the last night of our Watch to Win week. And we're celebrating the queen of hip hop and soul, Mary J. Blige, by having an MJB album download giveaway. We already gave away some downloads here at Fox Soul. Now we're giving away Mary's new album, Good Morning Gorgeous, to five lucky soulmates tonight. And we're choosing the winners at random. All you got to do is get in the chat and be active. And once you're chosen, don't DM me or email me. I'm getting all these emails. You guys go to the Fox Soul Instagram page and DM us your name, phone number, and email address. Once we say your name on tonight's show, we will be announcing names. So to qualify, once again, you have to subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, watch us on YouTube. Jump on the chat, get your comments on, and that is your chance to win. Okay, we will see y'all and we'll announce those names throughout the show. Fellas, let's get to the show. Now, the fight of the century. Happened between the baby and Danny Lay's brother, Brandon Bills, at a bowling alley in Los Angeles. Now, in the video that we can't show you because of the violent nature of the clip, you can see the baby and his crew jump and drag Brandon by the hair across the bowling lanes. Now, law enforcement sources say they're investigating the baby for assault with a deadly weapon. And TMZ was told that's an uh, AWD, assault with a deadly weapon. I'm sorry, AW. A- ADW uh, case because Brandon Bills was kicked in the head when he was already on the ground. Now it's been reported that the baby is banned from the bowling alley after the fight. Al, I want to start with you. What are your thoughts on this fight? You know, I thought a the fight was unfair. 
Um, and I know a lot of people say that he asked for the heat and he got it. But if you're asking for the heat, you're asking for the heat from that person, not from him and five of the people to help him fight. But let me tell you something, Brandon Bill. I am very much proud of you, sir, because you took up for your sister. And that's what you're supposed to do. So I am on Brandon Bill's side. I come from a family of five and I got two sisters. And if you know anything about a Reynolds, if you mess with one of us, you mess with all of us. And if you come with some heat for my sister, I'm going to come for some heat with you. So Brandon Bill, thumbs up, brother. Way to take up for your sister. I'm very proud of you. Funky, what are your thoughts on this? Well, when you take up for people, you're not supposed to get beat up, right? Like if you go <laughs> into a situation that really ain't got nothing to do with you, I'm going to need for you to win and make sure your foot is planted on solid ground and not a freshly waxed bowling floor. Um, y'all already know how I feel about the baby. And considering how nasty the baby was to Danny Lee, I'm not going to lie. I wanted Danny Lee's brother to beat his ass. I did. Unfortunately, that's not what we got. And Brandon Lee ended up getting beat up. Um, so at this point, you're kind of looking foolish, in my opinion, because you ran off at the mouth so much. And he did get jumped. And he did slip and fall. Uh, the, classy, the classy base part of me wants this to be over. The ghetto side of me says I want them to square up one more time outside down to the parking lot. <laughs> one on one. You know, they said that the brother uh, did say, you know, he was on Jason Lee's show on Hollywood Unlocked with, Fo- with Foxhall. He said that, uh, you know, it's on site. So he did say that when he was really upset about his sister. So some people saying, well, that's a threat. But then. Sources are saying that he rolled up to the baby by himself, man to man, and said, I want to talk to you about this. And he want to have a conversation. And then it went left. One angle doesn't look so bad for the baby. The other angle, he totally was the aggressor. And I think, yes, Brandon lost this, 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 the battle. But I think in the end, I think the baby's really going to be in some trouble. He's already banned from the bowling alley and it's not looking good. He's already, uh, you know, he's already got a, a long list of offenses out there. He's probably going to get uh, in some kind of trouble for this. Don't you think? I, I, you know, now that now that I'm talking it through, I wanted to be left alone because we don't need to lose two more black men to the streets. Um, and this thing can get ugly when egos get involved. You know, y'all met up. It went down. I tell well, your sister, leave him alone and y'all just be done with it. Now, what I, a difficult situation like- for Danny Lay. She's she's got a baby by this guy and she has to deal with his man for the rest of her life. And now it's made even more um tumultuous you know with their brother that's terrible i thought they were getting along what are you what are you gonna say al well see this is the deal we all know that brandon bill will not press charges even though the baby if he did press charges would be very much in trouble that's why this the city of los angeles is the one that's pressing the charges because they are the one bringing the charges forward and not Brandon Bill because of the street code. He knows that he can't press charges against um, the baby, but the LAPD has nothing to do with street code. So the baby, I recommend you lawyer up. I, I, the baby, you know, at first it was kind of like, eh, and the more he speaks and acts and he's out there, the more trash behavior he's shown that he is. Yeah, and, uh, uh, but the fans love him. Y'all love him. And it's just, it, it's just so sad because when it was the, the whole issue with the LGBT community at the, the, the event, it was, oh, we're being too sensitive. Then it was the situation with Danny Lee and his fans found a way to excuse away that. I'm just curious to know what excuse they're going to find now to continue to excuse away his perpetual bad behavior. Like yeah. everything can't be somebody else's fault. That's right. Well, you know how it is right now. I mean, we're in weird times right now. Bad is good and good is bad. If you like someone, you're going to defend what they do no matter what. Even though it's very obvious when someone is wrong, we still be like, ah, but I like them. So we'll make excuses. It all depends on the person. So uh, I actually hope that there's a little justice in this case because I'm kind of getting sick of him. And I was one of the people that was like, mm. and the more he does, it's like, yeah, he's showing his whole ass and who he really is as a human. And He's showing trash behavior. Right. You with your backup and your security, you're going to kick someone on the ground in their head. Right. I mean, come on. All right. Anyways, moving on from that trash. Rapper Snoop Dogg is alleging that it's gold digging season after being sued for sexual assault claims. This may be a bit gruesome. So, uh, you know, uh, just bear with us. But the woman claims that Snoop Dogg repeatedly shoved his private part into her mouth while she was defecating. 
on the toilet. Snoop is denying the allegation and says, gold digger season is here. Be careful, nephews. Keep your guard up and keep your circle small. What do y'all think about these allegations? Funky, let's start with you on this one. You know what? It was one thing about this story that rubbed me the wrong way. And I always say this when we talk about these uh, these sexual assault charges that the Me Too movement taught us that we are not supposed to question these women and that we are supposed to take their word at face value and not re-victimize them. But the problem that I had with this story is that she said another one of his associates sexually assaulted her earlier that evening. Now, baby, come to me stupid, but if I got sexually assaulted one time earlier at the party, it would seem to me that you take your goddamn ass home, okay? I don't know too many people who get sexually assaulted and then stay and get sexually assaulted again. Now, if it happened, I feel sorry for it and it is not her fault, but things are just not adding up to me. I just don't know in what world you get sexually assaulted, you stay at the doggone party. Like, what was going on at that party? And she claims that, uh, Bishop Don Magic Wand, if I'm saying his name right, was the mm-hmm. one who sexually assaulted her the first time. Then you continue to stay at the party. That's just not adding up to me. And I'm not trying to victim shame her, but she's going to have to make it make sense before I get on board with this. I hear you. Al, what are your thoughts? Well, Funky, let me help you out on this one. She actually is making a lot of sense. Um, she was a bartender or a worker at the club. And at this particular event, a whole lot of things were going on and a lot of people were coming for her. Now, Snoop Dogg is not arguing that it never happened as far as them having some type of sexual encounter. In fact, the two of them went to mediation with their lawyers to settle this out of court as long as they could come up with an amicable number. So, you know, he wouldn't be doing mediation if there wasn't some truth there. So they brought the two lawyers together in mediation. They couldn't come to an amicable resolution. So she had no choice but to then pursue lawsuit. It's the same thing that happened to me when I had to, um, you know, I had my lawsuit with uh, uh, Magic Johnson's company. We went to mediation. We couldn't come to a conclusion. And I had to pursue a lawsuit. It's how it works. So it's not like she, you know, didn't try. It's not like he didn't try. They just come, couldn't come to a conclusion on a number that he felt comfortable with. Hold on. I no longer care about Snoop Dogg and this lady. Uh, what tea you had with Magic Johnson? What's the tea? I didn't know this story. <laughs> Google it, boy. <laughs> you had some business with him? I did. Google it. You got rich? I won. You still single? all right guys moving on bob Saget's family released the following statement about his death the authorities have determined that bob passed away from head trauma (laughs) and they have concluded that he accidentally hit the back of his head on something thought nothing of it and went to sleep now no drugs or alcohol were involved this is truly sad Uh, i also heard another uh, some more updates uh, today, I think it was on CNN that there was trauma to the front of his head and the back of his head, similar to someone who has been in a car accident. What are your thoughts on this update? This, and, and please do not take my words out of context. This makes me feel better because the way that a lot of the headlines and the articles were reading and the, the things that people were adding, some could jump to the conclusion that it was a suicide um, my grandfather, who I never met, died the same way. He got into a car accident, thought he was fine, and eventually died the next day because he had a brain hemorrhage and did not know. So it, it sounds very similar. I hate that this happened to Bob Saget, but I am glad to know that he was not a part of this rash of suicides that we've been seeing in Hollywood. Good point. Good point. Al, what are your thoughts? You know, this is so eerie and unfortunate, but let me tell you something. There's been several cases of people dying from injuries and especially head injuries in hotels. We know that 1.7 million people had head injuries or trauma injuries and 60,000 of them died from it. And we also know you all that somebody famous other than Bob Saget that this happened to was Tina Marie. You guys remember Tina Tina Marie was sleeping in her hotel room. The picture from the wall that was behind her fell on her head. Uh, She had gotten a concussion. Those concussions progressed into seizures. And she died ultimately because she got that head injury in the hotel room. 
we got to be very careful. And if any of you on this panel think back, you have been in a hotel where you have hit your head on something. We definitely hit our toe. We definitely hit our knee. But if you think about it in the bathroom, when you stand up, something at one moment in your hotel stay, if you hotel a lot, you've definitely hit your head. I've had about five concussions in my life. Once I fell in a bathtub and my cousin actually died like this. She had um, an injury that we didn't know about. And uh, we found out later that there was some abuse happening. 30 years old, died of an aneurysm, you know, had a headache, got it checked out and then went and try to keep it, you know, away from everybody, not want to uh, admit that there was some issues at home. So um, again, it, it's bittersweet. We're happy that it's not a suicide, but I think it's still fishy that there was a head. There was trauma. They said extreme trauma. I think it was Dr. Sanjay Gupta on CNN on the front and back of Bob Saget's head. He will be Miss great comedian. And uh, uh, I hope we can um, avoid some more of this moving forward. It's been a tough year already, 2022. All right, y'all, before we take a break, let's take a look at this Black History Moment sponsored by Nissan. Fox Soul is celebrating Black history makers who have broken barriers and created a path for change. Trailblazing this path all the way to the stars is Jessica Watkins the first black female astronaut selected to be a part of NASA's International Space Station. What a dream is, is just putting one foot in front of the other on a daily basis. Jessica will be the first black female astronaut to live in space for six months. Shooting into the sky before Jessica was Mae Jemison, the first black female astronaut to space spending 190 hours in orbit. Being selected for the NASA SpaceX Crew 4 mission, Jessica is a step closer to NASA's plan of putting a woman of color on the moon by 2024. Jessica's cosmic mission will surely inspire future generations of space cadets who dream of reaching the stars. Honoring Black History Month on TGIF, presented by Nissan. Choose Nissan today for great offers on our most exciting lineup ever. Shop NissanUSA.com. So are you guys excited to see a black woman go into space this year? Most definitely. I mean, I grew up studying Mae Jemison, doing book reports on Mae Jemison. And it's unfortunate that I have not been able to say another black female name since Mae Jemison. So this definitely riles me up and excites me. Al? All right. You know, Jessica, I'm so super excited for Jessica. Jessica is just the bomb. A, she's only 33. B, she went to Stanford undergrad and played rugby. So she's a student athlete that excelled academically. How amazing and inspirational is that? She got her PhD from UCLA. And guess what? While she was getting her postdoctorate degree, the woman, she was also a a, a assistant head coach at a university. How amazing is that? Jessica, keep up the good work and keep motivating and inspiring young Black women and men around this country. I'm here for all of it. Congratulations. As a Black woman that we're constantly, uh, you know, doing a lot of the work behind the scenes and have to carry a lot of weight on our shoulders with little, a lot of times, no recognition. I love that this is a woman that's uh, giving us a great example of other areas to pursue and to achieve Black excellence, I think this is super inspirational for every little Black girl that's watching right now. And Jessica, we support you. We, we, uh, we salute you. All right, y'all, we're going to take a quick commercial break. When we get back, we're going to announce our first three winners of the MJB download. We'll be right back with more TGIF after the break. Welcome back to TGIF. Uh, shout out to all 2198 of y'all in the chat. Let's get us a 3,000 this show. We see you in there being very active with all your comments. Let me tell you, it's a whole show in the chat. All right, y'all, if you're just tuning in, we are here. Uh, it's Watch to Win Week, and we're celebrating the queen of hip-hop and soul, Mary J. Blige, by giving away an MJB album download to uh, five lucky soulmates in our chat. Now, let's pick our first three winners. Congratulations go to Tawanda Bell, Antonio Johnson, and Renee Wilbon. That's Tawanda Ooh. Bell. Antonio Johnson and Renee Wilbon. Uh, congratulations to winning the downloadable version of MJB's new album, Good Morning Gorgeous. Make sure you take your behind over to the Fox Soul Instagram page and uh, DM us. Send us your name, email, and phone number. And look, if you didn't win just now, you still have time because we're picking two more winners during the show. Click the subscribe button and remain active in tonight's chat and you could be next. 
All right, y'all. Adele was labeled a rebel of sorts for her uh, Artist of the Year acceptance speech at the 2022 Brit Awards. Now, the Brit Awards decided to remove male and female from its award title after uh, artist Sam Smith pointed out in 2021 that the use of gendered categories was excluding non-binary acts. Now, while accepting the first gender neutral award of the year uh, award, Adele said something that many took offense to. Let's take a look. Award has changed, but I really love being a woman and being a female artist. I do. So, how do you guys feel about Adele's speech? And I, uh, the fact that this is even a thing is crazy to me. But hey, we all have our opinions. What do y'all think? I am a card carrying member of the LGBTQ plus community. And I'm going to be the first person to tell y'all I have all types of problems with the outrage. I do Um, so many times. And I hate being in this position because I'm, I'm in social situations so many times where I have to defend ignorant people saying y'all trying to erase real women. Y'all trying to erase real women. And here is an actual tangible instance where somebody can make the argument that they're trying to erase women. I understand that they wanna go to a gender neutral award, fine. And the Brit goes too, but that woman should not be ostracized, chastised or any other ties for saying, I like being a woman and I like being a female artist. That is her experience. That is who she is. That is her identity. And just because y'all want to fool out lot and manipulate the new titles with the awards and stuff does not mean that everybody magically has to fall in line and erase their gender identity. I think that we as the LGBTQ plus community, we got it wrong on this one. She is allowed to be a proud woman artist. And that's the beautiful thing about having a gender neutral award. You get to slap whatever gender you want on it when you receive it. I feel you. Al, what do you think? Yeah, it's the hop, it's the hypocrisy for me. This is silly. She is a stu- a superstar because how she shared her experiences as a woman and she shared them with the world and she was so vulnerable. I just find it that how does an organization that protects people's ability, right, to identify is going to be upset with her because she identified as a she. Now, your whole organization is supposed to protect people to have the ability to choose how they identify. She chose to be identified as a woman, and now you're upset. Shame on you, organization, for taking this opportunity to get some press. It makes absolutely no sense to me. You're double talking, and that's not cool. I understand the community was definitely discriminated against. I understand the community felt excluded. I understand that they want equality. That is all legitimate. And they should fight for that at every step of the way. But when we get to a point where a natural born woman cannot proudly say, I am proud to be a woman without backlash for about three days now, you guys are effing tripping. You make it hard to be an ally when you do stuff like this because it's absolutely ridiculous. Now, this is not the entire community, so don't take my word as such. It is not. But the people that are shaming this woman and have a problem with a woman saying proud of being a woman, you are freaking ridiculous. I wish I could cuss on this show, but we trying to be on the broadcast affiliates in Cleveland and Cincinnati and New York and Houston. Okay, but you guys are tripping. How do you expect people to stand behind your movement and let you and no, I'm sorry, not let you support you when you say you identify as whatever you want, but then telling a woman who was born a woman that she cannot be proud of being a woman because that's toxic or problematic. You are your goddamn mind. You are. And I think it's ridiculous. And if you don't want us to feel like we're being erased, stop saying stuff like this, because I felt like that. Like, what? Can I not say that now? Am I offending someone if I say I'm proud to be a woman? At some point, we've got to say enough is enough. I think there was an absolute injustice to the community. But when you mess up with the overcorrection and you make it so ridiculous, you're not doing anyone any favors because now no one can take you seriously. Adele can't proudly say she's a woman. Get the F out of here. Too much. Too much. It's ridiculous. And I'm and, and and I don't even know what to say about that. 
I'm with you when you're right. <sighs> All right, y'all. Vogue magazine is getting backlash following the release of their March cover. Uh, people were outraged to see Kim Kardashian on the cover instead of Andre Leon Talley, who recently passed away. Now, people are saying that Vogue should have honored Talley, especially during the Black History Month that we have now. But instead, they published a spotlight story about Kim Kardashian. What do you think? And should Talley have been on the cover? So he 100 percent should have been on the cover. That would have been the proper and the humane thing to do. The larger conversation that I want to have with people that look like me is these people been showed us who they are. They've been showed us what they were about. These organizations like Vogue and these other big magazines, they have been told us our place amongst the organization. I am tired of us begging them for respect and begging them to do right by us when they've already told us how they felt about us time and time again. Andre Leon Talley told us in his book about the discrimination and stuff that he's faced from this organization. I've come to a point where I don't expect much from them. That way I can't be let down. I think this is a total injustice, but I'm going to go ahead and say this and some people are going to get offended. It's white people being white. Okay. Al, hey. Yeah, you know, I agree with you, Funky. This was very intentional. It was planned. I think in their mind, they said, listen, we gave British Vogue to Black models, so they need to accept that and be happy. But on Vogue, Vogue, we're not going to honor him. We don't really care about all the contributions that he's made. He is our Black icon of fashion, as far as we know it, for a mainstream publication like Vogue. So this is a double slap to me. I thought it was intentional. It was shady, not only to Leon and I mean, Andre Leon Talley, but also to us as black consumers. So we need to take that that back. We need to take that narrative back and we need to force them to do what's right by us. And it starts by replacing Andre Leon Talley and someone in those ranks with people of color. There's no way you can tell me that you can be sitting in that boardroom and you say, okay, what are we going to do for Black History Month? And everybody in the room said, let's put Kim Kardashian on it. It doesn't even make any sense. But if we have some Black representation there, because as Black consumers, we say we need more, then when Black history comes up, hopefully that Black representative will be like, clearly, let's represent a fashion icon of color. Now, I'm going to say this. I used to model about 20 some years ago. And when I would do magazines, even covers, they do plan those things 90 days out. Uh, I do understand that there's preparation. We shoot, you know, we're going to shoot in March for, for a June, July issue. I get it. But you knew back then what month February was. And even if it wasn't Kim Kardashian, have somebody else that was black. Even if Leon didn't die, Andre Leon Talley didn't die, they should have had someone in the queue to be there for Black History Month. The fact that he died, we all know that Anna Wintour was not feeling Kim Kardashian, wouldn't even let her into Met Gala Ball until Kanye really championed for her. And then, then she was able to, she was pal palatable. Like, you know, now they're cool. But I... We're in a different time now. When breaking news happens, when things change, you should be able to pivot and change it. Yeah, we have Kim Kardashian scheduled, but I think we should do a tribute to this man who has been synonymous with fashion and with Vogue magazine. Like, come on, y'all. But you know what? This is our fault because we keep begging white people to be in their magazines, their award shows. We want their accolades and we don't support our own. When we come to our own magazines, we call them ghetto. We call them less than we call them, you know, they're they're raggedy. So that's whose fault is it? You know, we build the other platforms up and we don't take our own seriously. How many big a listers don't show up to the BET Awards, the, S, uh, the, the, um, the Soul Train Awards in favor of the Grammys and all the other white shows? So part of that is on us, y'all. We got you know black what? outlets and we need to support them and stop begging, like y'all said, for the white man's ap approval. You know, it's also funny. I also live by the mantra that you can't do wrong to an MF and tell them how mad to get. And something about this tells me Anna went to her somewhere grinning because she got the last laugh because Andre <laughs> Leon Talley sprayed her in his book. 
And I think she said posthumously, baby, you will not be honored on the publication that I am in charge of after you sprayed me up and down and round and round in your book. So I definitely think there's still some bad blood there. And to Al's point, this was extremely intentional. Well, yeah, none of this is a by accident. Rarely things are. A lot of times things are intentional and people will say, oh, I didn't really mean to do that. But you did. All right, y'all, taking a quick commercial break. We'll be back with more show uh, and more winners later on the show after this. Welcome back to TGIF. Uh, shout out to all 2,500 people in the chat. Hey, y'all, uh, this story, the chat has asked us to talk about this uh, big news story all over the news. DeMontero Gibson, a black FedEx driver, was shot at by a white father and son while delivering packages in Mississippi. Uh, we can definitely see the similarities between this case and that of Ahmaud Arbery. Now, Gibson was asked on Friday if he believed the men were trying to kill him. Gibson told CNN, honestly, in my humble opinion, I think they were because after they fired the initial shots, they continued to chase me out of the city. Um, I mean, it's no secret that black Americans have been hunted down by by, by white men. And they, up until recently, they've gotten away with it. And now they're starting to get a little justice, but they're still bold. What do you think about this story? And thank God this man lived to talk about it. I really think we're living in a zombie apocalypse where somebody has put something in the water that is making people crazy. And the only reason why I say that is because in 2022, there just is legitimately no way you can get away with committing a crime like this. And the fact that people are so brazen and emboldened to do so just suggests a high level of brain malfunction or mental illness. Like how... I just can't wrap my brain around taking a gun outside and shooting at someone like we're in the wild, wild west. Al, I need you to help me out with this. I mean, I'm still confused about the charges. They charged those guys not with attempted murder. They charged them with felonious attempting to cause bodily harm injury with a firearm. I'm, I'm just like, OK. So you guys are going to chase him out of town. You're going to shoot at him multiple times, but because you couldn't hit him and kill him, we're going to charge you with felonious attempting to cause bodily harm with a firearm. It's the it's just the double standard for me. And I, I don't see it going anywhere, Funky. Unfortunately, I really don't see it going anywhere. And even Ahmaud Arbery's case is not stopping these people from showing their true colors. You would think that in their head, they would say, oh, we better act right. We better do it at night. No, this was in the clear daylight. They don't care. They don't care. The, the root of all of this is hate, hate and racism. And people's true colors aren't changing. And this is quite, it's not changing in this and it's not changing in the criminal justice system either because look at what they're being charged for. I know people will say, um, uh, you know, They'll 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 have their explanations for this. Um, this just this stuff's been happening for a long time in America. So many people have gotten away with this. So many police officers, so many uh, citizens, citizens arrests, all kinds of nonsense has been happening in America. But up until recently, with everyone having smartphones, has uh, you know they got away with it. We didn't have the video, but now we have the video, and it's amazing that even with uh, you know the technology we have that people are still trying it because that's how little fear they have of repercussions. When we do hear of a case, it's man, it's like not even 50, 50 that they're going to really have to pay. And look how much we celebrate when we, when we do get a conviction, because it's such a big deal. Um, you know, I know people, a lot of people are not happy with Joe Biden and his presidency, but I'm going to tell you this. I'm not saying Trump is the root of this racism because he's not, it was already there. It's been here since the 1500s. Okay. But he definitely lit a fire and made these people feel OK with it to be public about it. At least in the 80s and 90s, there was some kind of shame. There's no shame anymore because we had a president that bragged about it. We had a president that said, if you get arrested supporting me, I got you. Don't worry about it. We had a president that's telling Joe Rogan, don't apologize for being caught saying the N word. So we just have a different environment now. If you want this to happen again. Keep complaining and keep thinking that Trump was a better choice because I'm not blaming it all on him, but he certainly is the cheerleader for this kind of behavior. And here's what baffles me. 
When they have on a UPS brown uniform that we all know or a FedEx uniform, obviously they belong. They're providing a service. And these people are damned if you do, damned if you don't, because if you wasn't getting your package, you'd be wanting to shoot UPS like my ass do, okay? I'd be wanting to shoot UPS all the time, but not because I'm racist, because they always losing my damn packages. But that's a whole nother conversation for a whole nother show. If the man didn't come to y'all neighborhood, y'all be wanting to shoot him, and he's there doing his job, providing a service for you and your neighbors, and you want to shoot him. You know, it, 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 it's funny because I'm almost feeling like these, do, I, I would be curious to know, Al, and maybe you can speak to this because you're in that corporate stuff. What do you think these companies are doing to try to protect their people of color seeing as though these situations are arising more and more with people being chased out? <laughs> they issue statements. That's what they do. <laughs> so nothing. A whole do they lot of really nothing. do anything? Do you think they really going to do anything? Have they done anything? Have we seen FedEx issue a statement around this? Why wasn't FedEx's uh, a corporate counsel uh, uh, flanked beside him and his individual counsel or lawyer? Why does this young man have on the job be shot at and his job isn't paying for his law representation? That's telling you what these corporations are doing about it. They're going to issue a statement in the next couple of days talking about the actions that this uh, driver has experienced is nothing that's a part of our corporate culture. And we we rebuke anybody who feels like they can shoot at our cars or whatever. But where was the FedEx lawyer representing him on CNN? That's telling you what these corporate organizations are doing, Funky. What I would like to see happen when this happens with these companies is that they stop servicing the community. And I know that would be maybe unfair to everybody, but I definitely think it would put community pressure on those people who want to show their behinds to at least act accordingly. Yeah, that seems interesting. That could be some accountability, not necessarily stop delivering, but maybe home delivery in what's considered an unsafe zone. They have to pick up their own packages and until that community takes accountability for those losers um, behavior. Now, you, you're on to something because they quit the one to redline our neighborhoods and call them this in a black neighborhood. Right. You're absolutely right. If they got on the mailing list where they started being listed as unsafe neighborhoods and their property values started getting affected, then right. they asses would act right. Well, they're not going to do that. And they're going to continue to redline our districts and make it virtually impossible for us to ever get power in our own cities where, where the black population is the majority. And they continue to do that. But you know what? Once again, we continue to only care for every four years, not every two years like we need to when it comes to voting. And we get the judges that we let them put in there. Uh, fellas, yes. let's toss to another moment in black history. And uh, that is all made possible by Nissan. Let's take a look. Celebrating black history makers who have broken barriers and created a path for change. Trailblazing this path all the way to the stars is Jessica Watkins the first black female astronaut selected to be a part of NASA's International Space Station. What a dream is, is just putting one foot in front of the other on a daily basis. Jessica will be the first black female astronaut to live in space for six months. Shooting into the sky before Jessica was Mae Jemison, the first black female astronaut to launch into space, spending 190 hours in orbit. Being selected for the NASA SpaceX Crew 4 mission, Jessica is a step closer to NASA's plan of putting a woman of color on the moon by 2024. Jessica's cosmic mission will surely inspire future generations of space cadets who dream of reaching the stars. Honoring Black History Month on TGIF, presented by Nissan. Choose Nissan today for great offers on our most exciting lineup ever. Shop NissanUSA.com. Shout out to Nissan, but real quick on the tales of that FedEx story, DeMontero Gibson, I just got some news. He was put back on the same route by FedEx, said no, and they put him on unpaid leave. So FedEx, you are responsible and you are complicit in this case, and you're not a sponsor of us right now, so we can speak on you right now. So get it together, FedEx. We're not going to use you. All right, y'all. Uh, what do y'all think about this uh, moment in Black history sponsored by Nissan? What do you think? I'm happy for the young lady. Um, and I'm just waiting to see the succession of women that her story inspires. 
and we need to hurry up and get her to the moon. So can we start a GoFundMe to get this lady to the moon? <laughs> Not a GoFundMe. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need a GoFundMe. She's going. You know what? I got to be honest with you. I just got goosebumps because I'm actually very, very proud to be on a platform that is recognizing people of color doing our programming and teaching us about things that we necessarily would not hear of or know today. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna pull that whole thank you, uh, Fox Soul, and also thank you, Nissan, for feeling comfortable to support us and, and advertise on our platform. I'm enjoying it. Unlike FedEx. Right. <laughs> Those bitches. How you put someone back on the back same corner route? route they got what did shot I tell at? you? What did I tell you was gonna happen? They probably issue a statement. But, but you know what? That's just that's just the whole public relations and marketing department needs to be fired. Right. Well, Can you, know you imagine if they put a white person back on the route? If they were beat up by a black person in the bad neighborhood, right? Do you think they would put them, you go on back to this area tomorrow? And then if you say no, uh, unpaid leave. Absolutely well, not. You clearly know what this is, everybody. This is clearly retaliation. All right. And they're retaliating because he put FedEx on Front Street. On national television, he basically said, hey, FedEx put me in a, in a very bad situation. They're not doing anything about it. So I'm going to jump on national television and, and tell everybody. So FedEx is basically saying, if, if you, young man, you think you got more money than us, you don't. Go back to your route and don't say another word. That's all right. He's going to get his law. He's going to get his lawsuit money. And the minute Ben Crump and Al Sharpton and Sue Ann Robinson and all the rest of our freedom fighters get a hold of it, FedEx going to be singing a whole other song because we're going to turn y'all ass every which way set loose. And I'm ready for it. Uh, DeMontero, I got some fantastic retaliation lawyers and I have not lost. Holla at me, DeMontero. I got you. Anyways, we're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be back with more show after this. Welcome back to TGIF. Listen, y'all, um, give us some hearts or some flames or some fire, some thumbs up if you're enjoying tonight's show in the chat on YouTube. And make sure you tell a friend to subscribe to the Fox Soul YouTube channel and get our numbers up. All right, y'all, I want to get your uh, thoughts on the story. Twitter trolls are attacking a uh, Texas A&M coach, Sydney Carter, for her game day outfit. Now, Carter wore an ivory sweater and pink vinyl pants for breast cancer awareness. Now, several people called her outfit unprofessional and said her outfit didn't warrant respect. One Twitter user wrote, it's unprofessional. Definitely the pants, vinyl pants, really, to work. Another user came to Carter's defense and wrote, men always feel the need to criticize women for every little thing. Her outfit was pink for breast cancer awareness. She's beautiful, plus her team won. What is your take on the story? And is she getting pushed back because she's a female coach? So she's most definitely getting pushed back because she's a female coach. Now, here is the thing. We're not going to pretend like people are just blind and completely coming out of left field about her outfit. We're not used to seeing our coaches look like this. OK, Let, we, we can have that conversation, but I'm not going to call her outfit inappropriate. She is a woman, you know, women, you know, dress like that. She's a shapely woman. And, and, and so be it. But we're not going to act like we're not used to our women basketball coaches wearing them oversized suits and them tennis shoes looking like Lori Lightfoot from Chicago, okay? <laughs> so I think that's the problem. But all things aside, there's nothing wrong with her exuding a little femininity on the sideline. My only question is, I know the coaches oftentimes run aggressively up and down the stage, the, the court. How can she do that with the heels on? But if she can do her job outfitted like that, I have no problem with it. Al? Well, first of all, she was player development coach. So she's not gonna, she's not a head coach. She's not gonna be running up and down the sidelines, Funky. I think that this has nothing to do with uh technically with what she's wearing. I think it has to do with her body. I think she's a beautiful black woman. She's sexy and she's covered. She's not doing anything inappropriate. What's inappropriate is they're not used to seeing all that booty and thighs and 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 curves. In all that, in all that glory. If it was a woman not of color and not all that shape, 
with a flat square body and booty, there would be no discussion about those uh, pleather, those whatever, the vinyl pink pants that she had on. It is clearly because she's a black woman. She's got a beautiful, shapely body and they too busy looking at her. You know what? And her thighs and her breasts and not paying attention to the game. Whenever a black woman has curves or has this kind of body, it's called slutty tacky, unprofessional, and a long list of adjectives that they use and hold and reserve for black and or curvy women. If she was flat chested, if she had no booty or no, no ass, it would not be a problem. No one would say a word. They'd probably say it was so cute. And the fact that she did it for breast cancer awareness, shame on y'all for criticizing this woman. She has the body she has and that's that. What you want her to do about it? Get rid of it? Look like All right, y'all, let's get in. <laughs> right. Like- what the fuck you say? Look like Britney Spears. They wanted to be shaped like a cereal <laughs> box in the front and the back. But go ahead, Claudia. All right, y'all. The three-week rule may be the best financial advice ever. Now, what is a three-week rule? Wait three weeks to buy that car. Wait three weeks to refinance your home mortgage. And wait three weeks to finance any major purchase. Now, why three weeks, you ask? Because that's how fast the average scoremaster user takes to boost his or her credit score, an average of 61 points. And listen. 61 points added to your credit score can save you tens of thousands on everything we finance. Scoremaster technology was developed by a credit data scientist to boost your credit score higher and faster than you thought possible. Now, Scoremaster is so easy, it takes about a minute to get started, and you don't have to wait for months for your best credit score. Try Scoremaster for free and see how many points you can add to your credit score. Go to scoremaster.com slash T. That's scoremaster.com slash T. Again, scoremaster.com slash T and go ahead and get that. I have it y'all and it works and it keep me on point. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be back with more of TGIF after the break. Welcome back to TGIF. Now, if you're just joining us, it's Watch to Win Week and we're celebrating the queen of hip hop soul, Mary J. Blige's new album, Good Morning Gorgeous, by giving away an album download of five lucky soulmates who happen to be in our chat being active. Now, three people have already won and now it's time to pick our final two winners for tonight. Now, congratulations. Go to, drum roll please, Brian White and Kelly Rutledge. Congratulations, Brian. I'm sorry, Brian Smith and Kelly Rutledge. Brian Smith and Kelly Rutledge. Congratulations on winning the downloadable version of MJB's new album, Good Morning Gorgeous. Now, go ahead and make sure you go to Fox Soul's IG page. Submit your name, email, and phone number in our DMs, and someone will get back to you with your prize. All right, y'all. Ugh, let's talk about this. Um, Christian pastor Brian Sauve sparked a lot of conversation with Twitter users after he instructed women to not post certain photos on social media. He wrote, Dear ladies, there is no reason whatsoever for you to post pictures of yourself in low-cut shirts, bikinis, bra, and underwear, or anything similar, ever. Not to show your weight loss journey, not to show your newborn baby, not to document your birth story. One woman responded, I know you've never managed to pleasure a woman before, but please calm down. Your fragile and emotional insecurity is irrelevant and you are compensating for something very small. We will do whatever the F we want. Another woman wrote, I am a proud member of the congregation of the Holy Church of Mind Your Own Damn Business. You should try it sometime. Do you think he was out of line? He was most definitely out of line, y'all. And you know what's getting exhausting? Like, it is legitimately 2022. I think we've all evolved and come to realize that we are all equal. Nobody deserves to be policed by anybody for gender, sexual orientation, creed, and race or religion. What is so hard about just live and let live? We are no longer in this archaic world where men run the world and tell women what to do. We're all equal. Let it go already. And it doesn't uh, surprise me that he is Caucasian. (laughs) They seem to be the ones who are having the most problems with letting go of being in control. I agree. Al, what do you think? I agree. 
Praise the Lord, then. What's the good? <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, I don't know why uh, people are so concerned about what the next person does, whether it's abortion, whether it's how you dress, whether it's what you eat, what you say, what you do, how you feel, how you sing, how you dance, what you have sex with. It's none of your goddamn business. If you don't like it, you don't do it. If you don't like a woman dressing sexy, then maybe you don't have a woman or man in your life that dresses sexy, pastor. Or unfollow uh, them. It's really like, imagine going through your life every single day, giving man. a damn what you doing. I agree. Uh, why do you care? And and, and these people that are in the church, let me take a sip on this. You have the audacity being the church where it's supposed to be like, you ain't supposed to be judging each other and y'all judge the most. Mind and, you the, and the church said, come as you are. Well, maybe he's not coming enough and that's why he's so worried about everybody else. Because mm. it sounds like yeah. misery to me. All right, y'all. Well, great times tonight. Uh, let me go to the chat. 2477 in the chat. We fully expect all of you to get us to 3000 tomorrow and uh, get our numbers all the way up. All right, y'all. I want to thank my co hosts, Al Reynolds and Funky Dineva, for joining me tonight. Thank you so much for watching us on the, on the uh, YouTube channel. I want you to stick around because the mix is coming up next. Fellas, I want you to have a fantastic weekend and I will see you all next week. Have a great Valentine's Day. Child, I'm single. No gentleman call us, child. <laughs> I believe it when I see it. We'll see y'all next time. Bye, y'all. Bye, soulmates. <laughs>